Okay, the next game we are seeing is a game from the 19th century by the famous Joseph Henry Blackburn against Harmonist, played in Breslau in 1889. Let's see how that game developed, where White used a somewhat different technique, not with the pawns marching up on the king's side, but rather coming out with a queen to develop the attack. So you will see that the first move is somewhat different, a different move order, however it still transposes to the same as we've seen in the previous game. In this game black delayed playing c5, but other than that the development is somewhat similar. And in this sample game white brings the queen out, c5 and c3. It's very common that c5 is always answered by c3. Knight bd7, and now comes the key move, queen to h3. This is really important because it uh, kind of ties the black knight to the h7 square. It cannot just move away because then white would just checkmate. So, now in this game, black made kind of a suspicious move, played rook to e8. On the other hand, if the knight would move to e4, the problem would be that white would just attack the knight, and now naturally white attacks the knight, and the knight cannot take on d2 because of the checkmate on h7, so the knight would need to go right back from where it came from. And then after knight takes, the knight could not take back because of the same checkmate, just the queen. And then after g4, threatening to advance to g5, black is in major difficulties. So going back to this position, black played rook to e8 with the idea to move the knight then to f8. White continued bringing the second knight to f3 with the idea to then come with the knight to g5 and attack on f7. Especially if black would play knight f8, that would be a really dangerous threat. Black played knight e4 in this game. And now everything goes as clockworks with tempo, not giving black the chance to recover. Knight takes, black must recapture. White played knight e5, attacking the queen. Queen went back to d8, f3. Now we see the same problem. The knight has to go back to f6, otherwise white queen would take on h7. And now comes a key idea that white can deflect the knight by playing knight g4. Now the threat is to trade knights on f6 and then just take on h7, win a pawn plus resume the attack. Now black has two ways to try to stop white's threat, either move the h-pawn to h6, then the problem is that white just sacks the bishop, destroys all the pawns in front of the king and will checkmate very soon after. Alternatively, if black plays g6, then it has different problems. And that was the beautiful thing in uh, this opening, that there are so many tactical resources for white if black is not really careful in the opening stage already of the game. So far, white has been playing in the king's side, a little bit in the center, and now all of a sudden a move on the other side of the board. Bishop b5, using the unfortunate positioning of the rook, attacking the rook. If the rook would move away, white could simply trap the rook with bishop h6. So after bishop b5, if black doesn't want to lose an exchange, the knight needs to block, but that yet yields to a different problem. By white playing knight a6 check, king g7, and another sacrifice, knight f7. If king takes, queen takes h7. If king goes down to f8, bishop checkmates immediately, 
on h6, so king f6, and now the simple pawn move g4, threatening with g5, and if black plays g5 himself, then checkmate in 3 by force, try to pause for a moment, figure out how to end this game quickly, forcefully, and precisely. And the answer is, takes, takes, check, king f6, and g5. Beautiful pawn checkmate. Therefore, after knight f7, black cannot take, but play the bishop h4 check, intermediate move, hoping that if, uh, let's say, the white king would move out of the check, then black would just take the knight on f7 without allowing white in takes h7, but white blocks rather with the bishop, very important. Now, if bishop takes, then pawn takes, making sure the queen remains on the h file, king f7, and now there are various good moves, including queen takes h7, but probably most precise is bishop d7 first, and then queen h7 or such, and black is lost. After bishop g3, black responded in the game with king f7, and now the best move for white was taking the bishop with the queen. In the actual game, white took with the bishop, was up a pawn, and later won the game anyway. But most precise was playing queen h4, because black now cannot trade the queens without losing further material here, or at least be in major trouble. For example, if black tries to protect the knight, white can play bishop c6 and then come back with this bishop. So again, black is in further trouble. So I hope these two sample games gave you an idea what this opening is about. And in the next uh, games, through the next games, we'll uh, look a little bit more move by move in how to play the London system when black does not play with G6.